Drawing Out the Facts, the Naked Science Scrapbook. Hello and welcome to the Naked Science Scrapbook from the Naked Scientists. This time we'll be answering the question, how does a jet engine work? Humans seem to have an insatiable appetite for flying. From the myths of Icarus to the designs of Leonardo da Vinci, history is full of attempts to fly. The real difficulty for powered flight is that a plane needs to carry its own power source, which needs to be as light as possible. This rules out quite a lot of potential options. For instance, running a plane on coal would be somewhat challenging. So how does a jet engine make the plane move forwards? Well, if you stand on a skateboard and spray a fire extinguisher, you'd roll in the opposite direction to the spray. This is because of Newton's third law, that every force acting on a body must have an equal and opposite reaction force. This is the same principle that drives the plane forwards. The jet engine sucks in air at the front and fires it out the back much faster than it went in. So a jet engine is essentially a machine for throwing air backwards in order to push the plane forwards. It also takes full advantage of the fact that air expands when it's heated. Imagine a tin can full of petrol with a hole in one end. If you set fire to the petrol, it'll burn with the air in the can, making the gases expand, which shoot out the hole in the end, propelling the can forwards. The problem with this is that you'll run out of air to burn, and you need to find a way of replacing the air without letting the exploding fuel providing the thrust out forwards. One early solution was to put valves on the front of the can. This is how the V1 doodlebug flying bombs used in World War II worked. But this wasn't very efficient, and the valves tended to fall apart after about an hour. A better way of getting around the problem, which is found in jet engines, is to use a turbine to suck in air at the front of the engine. The air then gets squashed by a series of turbines known as the compressor. The air then passes into the combustor, where fuel is injected and ignited, creating a controlled explosion. The hot gases produced rush out of the back of the engine, passing through more turbine blades, which are attached to the compressor. As they spin, the compressor turbine spins, sucking in yet more air from the front. The reason the expanding gases don't escape back out the front of the engine is that the route out the back is much easier than going all the way back through the high-pressure compressor. The French engineer Sadi Carnot realised in the 1800s that in order to run an engine like a steam engine more efficiently, you need to run it hotter. And ever since Frank Whittle invented the modern jet engine, the operating temperatures of these remarkable machines have crept up and up to improve their efficiency. Now, when we say there's a controlled explosion inside the combustor, we really mean that. It's an explosion. And the temperature inside a commercial jet engine can reach up to 1700 degrees C, which is much higher than the melting temperature of the metal used to make the turbine blades. So how do we stop the blades from melting while the plane is in flight? Well, there are a few solutions that are already being used, including drilling cooling passages through the turbine blades, which creates a thin layer of air over the surface, protecting it from the vicious gas stream. Another strategy is to use thin layers of thermal barrier coating on the blades, allowing the operating temperature to increase yet more. However, these approaches can only be exploited so far, and the job of modern-day engineers is to find new engine architectures and materials that can be used to make your summer holidays a little bit more efficient, making your airline ticket a little bit cheaper, and taking a slice off your carbon footprint. That's it for this time. To get the answers to more science questions, join us online at thenakedscientist.com forward slash scrapbook. Bye!